Hi, Tony here. Welcome to the channel. And if you're a regular viewer, welcome back. Now, I haven't done any mods to my KTM 790 on here for quite some time. And I've had these parts kicking around for a little while. So it's about time that I got them on the bike. Now, I've had this box of goodies in my garage for uh, quite some time now, and I just haven't had an opportunity to get them fitted on the bike. All of these parts come from Camel ADV, a company based out of Calgary in Canada. These guys ride their bikes hard, and they produce really nicely engineered and simple solutions for some of the common problems that crop up on various different bikes, be that the KTMs, Africa Twins, Tenere's, there's all sorts of bikes that they cover. In the case of the KTM 790 Adventure and 890 Venture, and I think some of these will also go on the Husqvarna Norden 901, there are a few key parts that they think need a little bit of extra help. And this is what essentially forms the essential bundle for that particular bike. Those three products specifically for this bike, and I'll fit them in this order, being the uh, head brace, the cover for the, or the shield for the shock, and the one finger clutch lever. I was going to break these parts down into three separate videos, but actually they're pretty quick and easy to fit. So I decided to do them all in one, but don't worry, you don't have to sit through the bits that you're not interested in. Down below there's chapter markers so you can jump to the specific part that you want to see and I'll leave those in the description as well. So if you just want one of those parts to look at you can go straight to that, watch that bit. Now this is a really simple part, it's essentially two clamps and a bolt, that's it. But it plays a very important role for this particular bike. The tower on the 790 Adventure houses the headlight, a lot of electronics and wiring. It has the uh, TFT display mounted from that, the indicators, the screen. And if you start adding uh, sat nav mounts and stuff like that, there's a lot of weight that kind of goes into that front mount. And unfortunately, that's only fixed to the head tube by four uh, bosses that are welded on. There has been some cases for people that ride this bike hard off-road or do high mileage where those bosses have vibrated causing metal fatigue and they break off which is a pretty tricky and expensive repair to put right. So for a small amount of money the guys at Camel produce this little brace that just clamps around the head tube and uh, just gives that extra little bit of support. It takes the weight off of just the four bolts on those bosses, spreads it out around that, and alleviates the problem. So let's wheel the bike in, get it on the ramp, get the neck brace on as the first part, and I'll detail all of the parts and where you can get these from and their prices at the end of the video. So I'll start on the left-hand side of the bike. I've taken the deflectors off from here just to make it a little bit easier to see. You've got these two T30 Torx head bolts to come out, one at the top and the second one down here at the bottom. And then you take the left hand side one, you know which is the left hand side one because it has this little captive nut on it just a case of feeding that through so it avoids the wires and you see it sits there and lines up the holes so you can just put the original bolts back in with a little bit of Loctite on them but we don't want to do these up too tight we just want to get them started that's that side done let's nip over to the other side It's a bit trickier on here, there's a bit more wiring going on where this hard brake line is plumbed in. So it's just, it'll be a case of getting that bit behind those wires, but on the inside of these wires. So if you can see here, it comes around there and then you've got that little bit that matches up with the tab on the back of this tower. And that's where this extra bolt is going to go through. So again, a bit of thread lock. I so say the bottom one is just a little bit trickier because of the position of this brake line. Again, we don't want to do these two up tightly at the moment because we need to get the bolt in here. 
what you might have to do is just lean over and push from the back to get the nuts lined up but there we can see that's now biting once this one's tightened you can do these two the two on the other side and then that is it you've got that job done and you've got protection this just spreads the weight right across this bracket as opposed to just relying on these bolts and hopefully that will save these tabs from shearing off okay so next job is to fit this heat shield and that sits between the catalytic converter and the rear shock it's made out of a very thin lightweight aluminium very nicely powder coated uh, with some lovely welds on there now the reason that the guys came up with this is because that catalytic converter kicks out a lot of heat particularly if the bike is being ridden hard and it sits right underneath that rear shock so obviously that heat transmits up into the shock that warms the oil up as the oil gets hotter it starts to lose its performance so the idea of this is just to be able to deflect that heat away from the shock to keep the shock cooler and therefore prolong the life of the shock and the performance of the shock in use so this is where the shield goes it effectively has to wiggle up there and bolts on here and then that extra bit that we have that bolts on sits on the frame rail up here so the first thing i've got to do is give this bar a clean to make sure that that's not all greasy and this sticky pad is going to adhere to it then i'm going to put a scissor jack up so that this back end swings down a little bit to give me a little bit more room here i'll take the chain guard off because that gives me a bit more access as well and then it's pretty much three bolts and that's the second of the three jobs done okay so we'll undo this you can either use a torque key or it's got a 10 mil head on it that's going to go back in with some more thread lock and from what I can see it looks like it's going to be easier to get this piece up inside then bolt that onto it once it's in place get the bolt back in there peel the backing off stick it down jobs are good one. So actually getting it up through this gap is a little bit more trickier than I thought it was going to be. Now I suspect that this is more often than not fitted on the R model with the longer travel suspension. I think there's a little bit more room in here. What I found with the standard model and what I couldn't quite through, it was just catching on the clamp for the exhaust on the other side. So a quick tip, if this is going on a standard or an S model 790 or 890 adventure, just unbolt the exhaust clamp on the other side no need to take the exhaust off just unbolt the clamp move it out of the way you can then feed this up inside put the clamp back on and you're good to go so what i do is just leave this loose so that i can bolt this bit to the two holes stick it on the frame and then once we've got that position established it's then just a case of tightening this bolt up and we're good this is just one of these jobs that's actually not difficult it's just fiddly because there's not a lot of room here's another quick tip if you can just get that started so there's just a little bit of red there i can't get hold of it with my fingers with a pair of tweezers i can there we go so peel the backing off, move that up into the position where it needs to be and stick it down and we're done. So we're on to the final job now, the last two have been really easy, this is really easy as well, just a little bit more involved and that's fitting the one finger clutch kit. Now I'll admit the clutch on this bike isn't a heavy clutch. Camo ADV in one of their install videos uh, put a, a set of scales on it to measure the pull. The standard pull strength required to, for the clutch is around 14 and a half pounds. So let's say not very heavy, but once it fitted this kit, they found that that had reduced to about nine and a half. So it does make the clutch pull lighter, which is good if you are doing a lot of one finger clutching off road. Um, but as I say, for me, that's not really the important thing. What I found with the clutch on this bike is that it's got quite a short kind of friction point before you get to the bike. It's kind of on off. 
you kind of let the clutch out and it's boom and it goes. So if you are feathering it a lot, it's kind of a little bit binary in that sense. So having a broader friction spread would be good. And that's one of the things that this does because you've got an extra length. So the standard arm is relatively short. This arm has got three different settings on it. The first one is the same as the standard. The second one makes things a little bit longer in that bite zone and the last one makes it even longer and that's the one that the guys used in the camel video um, i'll see where i need to go i'll probably go middle for diddle to start off with just to see how that is but it is a pretty straightforward process so let's get into it so within the kit we've got everything we need there is a replacement cable holder here because obviously once you've got a longer arm in this this cable is going to come in at a different angle so this one just replaces the stock one so that that angle is correct. We've got a nice lightweight aluminium arm which replaces this. And then in the kit here you've got uh, the clevis arm, the pin that goes through that, uh, replacement bolt if you want to replace this one, and a small sort of cotter pin or split pin to go through the bottom of this as well. So everything you need is in here. So obviously when this goes on that slot is going to be there. So I'm just going to make a, no, a, a dot with a paint marker on here where that slot is, just there. That white dot on this bolt is where I need to line that one up. There might still be a little bit of fettling to get that done, but um, we should be okay. So if I undo this bolt here, which looks like a T30, might be a T25, then I can lift this off take all of these bits and pieces off and we can replace it. So we can lift this off, get that out of the way. Now you can see that Mark, there is a spring in this, so that is fully backed off, rolling it round, and that's where the clutch spring starts to move. There's your free play in the return spring here, because what you want that to do is return back but what I will do is I will get that fixed to where it was marked on the other one and then we'll go from there and see where it is. It may well be that they've taken the slack out of there and had more of the play at the lever end. I'll put that on in a minute. Next job is to take this rubber boot off and then a 12mm spanner to undo this bolt here. Got to try to do this up, not in the way of the camera. But we can get that off. I'm just going to undo these two, which we'll reuse. Me being right handed, I realise that's awkward because I've got my hand in front of what's going on. So, the original one of those can come off. The new one can slide through. I'm just going to slip that adjuster nut back on. So that's where it needs to be. The tricky bit is going to be pushing this back on. So a squirt of WD-40 is going to help. You've only got a teeny hole to squeeze that through, and a set of pliers just to carefully grip the cable, try not to damage it, but just so it stops it pushing back in there. And then it's going to be a case of just try and set there. We go, get that back on, push that over the sleeves. Then using the two bolts that we've just taken out, tighten those two up, and then we'll get the split pin, the clevis pin, and everything else. I'm going to go for the middle one, so we'll get the clevis around the right way. Push that pin through. Split pin's going to go through there. Put a split pin around the back. That can hook on to there. Drop this 
over the pin and then what we want to do is line that dot up with where this was before then when you've got that hook back on go around and make sure these are all tightened and then we can just check the free play at both ends you've got this lock nut you can loosen it off you're just pulling that little bit to see what free play you've got and then you can adjust this in and out to adjust that play and you want about it says about two millimeters of play in the manual I'd probably go one extra to that so maybe about three mil once you've done that and got it set just lock that back up again and you're done so there you go three pretty simple jobs two of which could possibly save you quite a bit of money going forward that being the neck brace and the heat shield if you can stop those pins from potentially breaking off and protect the rear shock that's good the one finger clutch is just an additional thing that i thought i'd add to that but it is part of that camel adv 790 890 adventure essentials pack the parts are very well engineered as you can see, they do exactly as they need to do and I don't think they're priced too badly either. Looking at them, if you're ordering from Camel ADV on their site, the one finger clutch is $69, the heat guard is $89 and the neck brace is $79. So if you buy those three parts separately from Camel ADV, that comes to $237. But you can buy them as a bundle, which will save you some money. And you can get all three of those together for $212. Now, if you're buying in the UK and you don't want to order from Canada because the postage can be expensive and you're going to have uh, VAT and duty to pay when it comes in, there is a distributor in the UK for them, which is Rugged Roads down in the New Forest. I'll put a link to them in the uh, description down below. They don't appear to do a bundle, but their prices for each individual parts are as follows. The one finger clutch kit is $67.95. The heat guard is $79.95 and the neck brace is $77.95. So I hope you found the video useful. As I say, it was just a quick one. I wanted to get those parts on and just show you very briefly how they go through. I've just had a quick spin around the block to see how they work and make sure I've got the clutch adjusted properly. Um, but I will do a follow up to this, just a short video, just giving you some feedback on how those things seem to even work. So as ever, a like and subscribe is appreciated. And until next time, thanks for watching. Take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.